Good morning, everybody. Well, it's actually about noon now here. But still, I say good morning. I say good evening to any of you out there. Well, I uh, I want to tell you guys about a few things while I'm down here looking for a couple sockets to take off a flat tire on my tractor. Yeah, I got to go get a tire fixed. Had a flat on the front this morning. That's the life. That's the life. I... I want to tell you about a few things. So I had put out a video today. There's what I'm looking for right there. This little socket set with me. There we go. Sorry about that. So uh, I put out a video today and this video here may come out later in the same day. It may come out the next day, but of us hauling some yardens to the sale, and I talked about those low prices and all. I just want to tell you all a little bit of things you may not realize. I'll give you a little bit of information here. We have been reducing this farm more than you guys realize. We don't always just tell everything. But I'm going to tell it. We have been reducing this farm down more than most of you even realize. We had around 100 head of cattle there in the beginning. Mama cows, multiples of bulls, uh, young heifers coming on to breed and all. And we started thinning them down. And let me tell you where we're at now. i just tell you the truth, just what it is. We have narrowed it down now to 32 mama head of cows. One single herd. We went from three divided herds with a bull on each herd and keeping pens with young bulls, raising them, and pens with young heifers, raising them, and selling bulls around to neighbors and stuff like that. And we have narrowed all of that operation down now to one herd, one group, 32 mama cows, one bull, and if something happens to him, I'll just go buy another bull, uh, raising no bulls for sale, keeping just a couple young heifers for replacements, maybe, maybe. We kept a couple, but it doesn't mean we're going to long-term keep them. And... We had talked about a long time ago that as a cow ages out that we were not going to replace that cow. Well, we've been doing that as a cow ages out each time we go sell or if I miss one and it passes away in the field, we haven't been replacing them. We lost a couple to the ice storm last winter here in Texas. You know how bad it got and all. And so those old frail cows had a couple of them to go down and... Um, one young calf that we had lost to the ice but we've been knocking it down smaller and smaller i've got um land of my own and now i own a good bit of property but i also have been for years leasing a hundred acre track over on another highway and when i had a lot of cows that was very important for us step out of the sunshine here we had a lot of cows that pasture was very important for us but now that i've cut it down i find myself not even going to that property anymore and of course there's lease monies had to be paid i carry uh, farm insurance anyway but these particular people that i rent from they want to be listed on there as additional insured and all and it raises my rate on my insurance i just just want to wind it down some I, I just really do i don't know if you guys noticed or not but i didn't bail as much hay this year as i normally do i just don't know if y'all realize that or not i didn't need to i knew i was nearing the herd down and it cut my work way down as well i was really glad for that because i had a lot of other stuff going on it's less pastures for me to manage less fences for me to worry about and I just focus on my property only. Make my property better instead of having leased properties that I got to divide my time up on too. 
We just want to have more freedom, but we're not going to do things in a crazy, rash way. Right now, the cows do bring us some income. Now, I've got money put back for retirement, um, and that's a good thing, right? I self-pension. you got to be careful. That money can disappear. That's why we like to keep incomes coming in so that we don't have to dip into that money, and we don't dip into that money. Um, I can push that money way further out before I need to put my hands into it. It takes a lot of discipline to do that. Well, we've got the house over there in the Philippines mostly built. I'd already bought the windows, I'd already bought the doors, I already ran most of the electrical, I've got solar system, water tank, you know, all kinds of stuff that I had already bought for finishing out the interior doors and all. So we're going I bought the kitchen sink, the bathroom sinks, I bought the shower fixtures, I've bought a lot of stuff already. Now I'm sure there's still be a lot of stuff to buy. Um, a lot of tiling, probably a lot of painting, and we got to build that staircase in the front, handrails all around outside, decorative roof out there still on the veranda, the where those cantilever beams are sticking out and all. Well, we let the money we earn here continue to pay for that. But the reason I'm telling that is we are not just instantly selling out and busting over butts over to the Philippines, but we're working that way. We're pacing ourselves that way, but we're not sprinting that way. Many of you wonder, why don't you finish these projects and stuff? A lot of those projects don't mean a darn to me. I could care less if this house in Texas was really finished or if it was fancy or anything. The barn, I kind of wish I never built it. It's becoming less and less important. That's why it's been on the back burner. Uh, trying to focus on things that's still making a little money, not costing money. And what we're trying to do is finish out the house in the Philippines. We bought that truck. It's paid for. We got our other older truck. It's paid for. Uh, we want all of our furnishings inside all paid for. You know, we got nice new couches and we got a lot of stuff already. Stove, refrigerator, you know, all these things are already there. And we want to buy a piece of farmland over there. Now, I ain't talking about a ranch like I have here in Texas. I'm talking about a piece of farmland. Some fruit trees, some garden space, maybe have a couple animals. Maybe I want to raise me a fattening calf each year. Not just buy one off somebody else, off their cow. Put it up, fatten it up, butcher it myself. I'm capable. Um, maybe I want to have a mama cow there. I might find one that's got, you know, fairly decent udders on her and all. And I might want to milk a cow. Uh, I, I might, I might not, you know, but I want those options. We want something that we can have a lot of our own fruit trees on. So we want to buy an established farm that we don't have to wait for these trees to grow. Maybe a few trees we plant ourselves, but we want to find something with some established trees on it as well. Maybe I want to dig me a little pond on that. I'm not going to try to go into commercial fish farming or nothing because I've set myself in my life that I don't have to go try to farm for profit in another country. I can go and hobby farm and relax and enjoy and travel. And if something happens to me, you know, if it helps Melinda's family, it helps them. Uh, what's it going to matter anymore? When you're not here anymore, what is it going to matter? So do something to help other people. You know, pass it on forward. Pay it forward is what they say. Pay it forward. But as we get those next things bought and paid for in the Philippines, off some earnings from here, some cattle earnings, some rent house money earnings and all, um, uh, then we'll start narrowing down here more. Of course, I know some of you say, you could just cash it all in right now and go buy all that. Also want to be smart. We are in an area right now that is growing and I don't see the growth stopping. I don't think it's going to stifle here 
like in some places up north and all have. And there's even some places up north are really going again right now. So we're going to pace ourselves. You know, something, uh, you know, that's worth one price right now may be worth 300% more than that or even 100% more than that in just a short period of time, another four, five, six years. So you got to be smart. But I wanted you all to know and understand where we're heading. It's not a confusing mess if some of you think that. We are steadily reducing down. Even this shop here, I haven't finished it because I'm thinking about reducing the size of the shop down. I'm thinking about not making it as big as it's going to be and just having uh, like a concrete parking area out on one end of it. Just reducing, reducing because honestly, we don't even need all that space. But the last thing I probably ever do is sell right where my house is. That would probably be the last thing I ever do. You don't know these countries from one place to the next what's going to happen. So, you know, I want to leave a backup plan. Well, that's what I want to share with you all. As uh, you've seen, we didn't grow a big garden here this year. Um, just stuff in pots because we're focused to enjoy those things in the Philippines and work on reducing our footprint here in Texas and in the US. I'm not complaining about the US. I'm not complaining about Texas. I just want to go over there and live a happy life on the beach with family there, Melinda's family, they're my family all around me, with all the nieces and nephews and their friends all around me. They grow fast and I want to enjoy them when we come home our next trip we're not going to stay back in texas for no six months or nothing like that our next trip we'll probably stay in texas for about two and a half months and return back to the philippines well that's what i want to share with you guys um you know you've got to make a plan you've got to be smart about it doing these rash things that just instantly cashing out and all you know you can you can do a fool's move there and, and regret it later it might seem wonderful at the moment but you can regret it later but you probably didn't know that we reduced our cattle down that much but it is one third the size that it once was yeah that is how much we shrunk it down and you guys didn't even know it appreciate watching this video Thank you. Take care. God bless. Keep following us. Keep following us. And we're going to be back to the Philippines. And I guarantee you, I'm going to deliver you some great content. Because that's where I'm very, very happy. See you later. Take care.